Amen, 38. We find that Jesus had just got through scolding the, the, the Pharisees and the scribes. Somebody say the Pharisees and the scribes. Because, amen, they had the, the outer appearance of godliness. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. But Jesus warned them against trying to impress people. Somebody said trying to impress people. Oh, I'm not trying to impress. You shouldn't try to impress. Let me tell you something. If you got to impress somebody, they're not your friend. That's right. I believe I say it again. If you got to impress somebody, they're not your friend. Amen. Because one thing about it, you ought to love me just the way I am. Amen. Say that. Amen. If my hair is nappy, you ought to love me Amen. with my hair nappy. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Because love covers what? A mother to the father. Amen. If my breath smell bad, amen, you ought to love me anyhow. <laughs> amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. You ought to love me anyhow because love, amen, covers a mother to a father. And so we find, amen, that Jesus didn't want that. He wasn't worried about the outer appearance. You know how some, some, you know, we've been to uh, some sanctum, I mean, some uh, 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 sophisticated, that's the word I'm looking for, sophisticated churches. Amen. And I just want to lose church because we have to keep it real what we're really dealing with. That's right. Amen. And so we've been to some sophisticated hey. places. You know, if you ain't dressed a certain way, That's you right. ain't welcome. Right. You know what I'm saying? But what I'm saying is, God is not like that. He's not messed up on your clothes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, because some of them that dressed up and and I can't wear a five hundred dollars suit. If I had the money, I wouldn't buy one anyway. Amen. But amen. Come to church with a five hundred dollar suit on. Amen. You look clean on the outside. Amen. Have some Versace on. Amen. Yeah. Perfect yeah. cologne. Amen. But you got it on the inside. Right. God is not concerned with that. He's looking at the inner inside of a man. Right. He's looking at your motivation. Why do you do what you do? Amen. Uh, I feel my hair. But Jesus had to deal with the scribes and the Pharisees. And let's move on because we got to deal with church folk. You know, some of us, we don't want to pray, not listen, not accept. There's a lot of people in the house. Uh -huh. <laughs> and Jesus deal with folk like that. Tell the truth, preacher. Amen. They didn't want to, the Pharisees and the scribes, amen, they didn't want to pray if the house wasn't food. Right. Didn't want to sing if the house wasn't food. They didn't want to preach if the house wasn't full. I come to tell you that Jesus was warning them. In other words, Jesus was saying, why do you do what you do? Jesus. Amen. And one thing you got to learn about it is, amen, there was a lot of phonies in the church. Go ahead. Amen. I come to tell you that there's still a lot of phonies yeah. in the church. That's right. That's right. Amen. And I'm not putting down on the church, but what I'm trying to tell you is, amen, I don't want you to be phony. That's right. Amen. Get a personal relationship with God. That's Learn right. why you do what you do. And when you do, when you know why you do what you do, amen, your motives is right. right. Amen. Then you don't have to worry about it. That's right. Amen. You don't have to worry about it. I don't do it to be seen amen. or to be heard. Amen. I do it because I love the Lord. Amen. And so Jesus deals with them because, amen, they was looking on the outside. That's right. The appearance was good. I'm reminded of when God anointed David king. And I just want to deal with that just for a few minutes and move on because, you know, amen, God said he was ready to anoint David and David had some brothers. Most of them looked better than David. That's what I love about God. Amen. God is not messed up on looks. Somebody say looks. Because you can look good and not be anointed. That's what I tell somebody. Give me the anointing. Because it's the anointing that destroys every sin and you. As a matter of fact, amen, the problem is with the church realm today is this. Amen. We're so caught up on performers that we don't know anointing. The difference between anointing and performance. But let me help you. The Bible says when the anointing shows up, it destroys every sin and yoke. Yes. And so we got to understand, amen, when the anointing 
takes over. When the anointings comes in the house, amen, you got to understand that it destroys every sin and yoke. In other words, those things that have you bound has to lose you. Amen. Amen. Those things are because why? Because, amen, the anointing is in the house. The yoke the yoke breaking power of God is in the house. I don't care what has a hope to you. Amen. It's got to leave when the anointing says, oh, somebody ought to high five the neighbor. Uh, I'm trying not to get ahead of myself, but I just get happy when I think about what the anointing has done in my life. I come to tell you that when the anointing gets a hope to a man or a woman, it doesn't matter how you look. God can take a kid, amen, and they can begin to sing praises unto the Lord because out of the mouth of babes and suckers come perfect praise. God is not looking at how you look. Amen, he's looking at your heart. In other words, what you do, you do it unto God. We're talking about the motivation of stewardship. But Jesus scolded them and said, look here. You do all these things. And, and that's what we don't want to do. We don't want church to become just a ritual. That's right. To you. But come because you got a relationship with him. Amen. Come because you love him. Come because you want to know him. Yes. Come because you recognize who he is, say God. And if you don't recognize who he is, go down on your knees and say, Lord, I want to know who you are. Yes. He asked Peter, said, Peter. Whom do men say that I am? My God. Some say that thou art the Christ. He said, some say that thou art prophet. He went on to say, some say this and some that say that. He said, whom do you say that I am? That's it. That's it. I come to tell you, my mama prayed for me a long time. My grandmother prayed for me a long time. But what I come to tell you, my mama knowing Jesus won't get me into him. Amen. My grandmother knowing Jesus won't get me into him. I got to know him for myself. Somebody said no one for myself. And so I want you to understand it don't matter how you look. Amen. It don't matter. Amen. You, Amen. If you can't afford to get your hair done sometimes. Amen. If you can't afford to get a hair cut. Amen. It's all right. Oh my God. Come on to the house of God anyhow. But see, you blessed. We got a barber right here in the house. You blessed. You blessed. Amen. We got a barber. And a beautician at that. Amen. You blessed. You blessed. Because if you're having problems, amen, we'll make arrangements. Ain't that right? Amen. If you got problems, we'll make arrangements. Amen. Oh, you don't hear me. Oh, you don't hear me. But what I come to tell you is, amen, God is not concerned with how you look. Amen. You ain't got to come up in here dressed up. Amen. Because sometimes I say if people dress like they feel. Amen. They, amen. The church will be full of, 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 of real people. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Because you can put a suit on. Go ahead. And I'm going to use me, for example. Put your clergy collar on. Amen. And be tore up from the floor. Right. You know I'm telling the truth. Tore up from the floor. Amen. Life is in disarray. Right. You don't know what, why you're doing what you do. Yeah. Amen. So I say, come as you are. That's right. But I tell you what, amen, if I dress like I feel a lot of days. <laughs> oh, my God, you might put me up out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying is, just be real with God. Don't fake it. Some people talk about fake it so you'll make it. Be real so you can be healed. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Amen. Be healed. And not only be healed, Amen. But be made whole. Go ahead. God want to make you whole. Yes. Don't come to church because, amen, of what you can get from God. Mm. But come because God can make you whole. Let us move on. Yes. As we move on in the text. Amen. This morning, seemed like the Pharisees and the scribes would have already been ready because Jesus had just got through teaching and telling them about some of the things they were doing. Their rituals and all the things they were doing. The Bible said in verse 41, and Jesus set over against the treasure, treasury, to behold how the people cast money into the treasure. And many who were rich cast in much. We just want to deal with that just for a little while. Because some of when we get to talking about money, something about the church. People get uneasy. 
when you're talking about money. But Jesus often used money because money was a red light, an indicator light. Just like when you go down, driving down the road, and an indicator light come on in your car. Tell you something wrong with your car. What you going to do? You're going to find a mechanic. That's right. Try to get him to check your car. So what Jesus does is he talks about, amen, he tried to fit, he knows where your heart is, figure out so you can figure out where your heart is. So he began to talk about, because it was a saying, amen, I don't say this, if you want to hit a man where it hurt, hit him in his pocket. That's right. And so what Jesus does, he gets their attention. Not that he wants your money. He owned the cattle of a thousand years, but he said, look here. Jesus said, look, where your treasure is, your heart will be there also. My God. And so this is what I tell people, uh, Sister April, I tell them to say, if God got your heart, he got your pocket. But what are you saying? You say, you saying that God want all my money? No, I didn't say that. I say, but if God got your heart, he got your pocketbook. That's right. That's right. In other words, God can tell you to do this and to do that, to sow it to this person's life. Amen. This person here, right. amen. You know, God has told me to do some things in people's lives. Amen. And you'll be surprised. I didn't even know they had a need for it. Praise right. And God said, give brother so-and-so yeah. 50 bucks. Amen. Give brother so-and-so 100 bucks. Praise God. You know, I'm looking at <laughs> looking at this. I'm saying, I'm looking at it myself. Say, Lord, I need that money. Holy Spirit said, oh, wait a minute. Do you trust me? Not, not, neither not knowing, amen, the man didn't even have gas to come to work. My God. Amen, would have lost his job. My God. But what I'm saying is God uses money, amen, as an indicator light for you to locate yourself. Go ahead. Amen. To see if you really, amen, really love God. Amen. He don't want all your money. Amen. But besides, amen, he owned the cattle of a thousand hills. He said, God has the riches of the wicked laid up by the hands of a righteous man. Uh -huh. I believe when, amen, when we give God, amen, our all, amen, and dedicate our life to the Lord and give God what we ought to give him, amen. We don't own everything anyway, amen. A lot of people die with their bank, bank account full of money and still bust hell wide open. Uh -huh. And so Jesus says, look here, he wasn't so much watching what they was giving. But it's how they was given. Somebody say the motivation. the motivation. He said the Bible said he was watching the whole how the people cast money into the treasury. In other words, Jesus, the spirit of discernment was at work. Somebody say the spirit of discernment. The spirit of discernment. Amen. You got to understand discernment. You got to have discernment. That's why the Bible said the weapons of our warfare are not counter, mighty through God. You don't want to miss this. Amen. Why I'm right here. Amen. Why I'm, why I'm here. Amen. The first Sunday, amen, of every month, amen, we're going to be teaching a new members class. Praise God. Amen. And that, it says the first one is, amen, if any man is in Christ, yes. he is a new creature. Yes. Amen. The second one, what God expects of me. The third one, put on the whole armor of God. My God. Amen. First Sundays, every month, amen, until Praise we get God. all the members to those three classes, all right. amen. amen, all the members, amen, because I want you to know, amen, who you are in Christ, Praise God. amen, and what God, because for so long we come to church, we didn't know what God expected of us, right. and so what happens is, what happens is we, we fade back in the scene because we come down the aisle and give the preacher I hand, but didn't give God your heart. That's My right. And so what happens is you just stop coming and nobody reaches out to tell you really what you have. Uh. Amen. When you accept God, you got to understand you got the King of Kings uh. and the Lord of Lords. And when you accept him, the authority of heaven is with you. Somebody say the authority of heaven. The authority of heaven. And so the Bible says when you speak Amen. These things shall come to pass. When two touch and agree, it ain't so much that we'll anything, but when two touch and agree, God will bring it to pass because the authority of heaven is with us. Amen. That's powerful. 